1993 was a big year for Sega as they produced not one, but two cartoon shows based on their mascot, Sonic. The aptly named Sonic the Hedgehog depicts our hero as a resistance fighter battling to free the planet Mobius from the vile Dr. Robotnik. While Adventures of Sonic went with the slapstick Roadrunner vs. Wily Coyote approach, Sonic the Hedgehog is proof that it is possible to take a video game and make a compelling, fun, action-packed show. From the show's opening, the tone is set with a darker, edgier version of Sonic and Robotnik. Instead of attempting to take over Mobius, Robotnik is already in control, and small groups of freedom fighters are scattered throughout the land. Sonic leads a group that is located in the Great Forest, living in a village which they call Knothole. Sonic is joined by Princess Sally, whose dad was the king of Mobius before Robotnik took over, as the leader of this group of freedom fighters. Come on, get the old lead ski out, guys. I'm waiting. Chill, swipe. Oh. The fighters often run operations to stop Robotnik's latest inventions and to free other Mobians before they are roboticized. Any hint of that troublesome hedgehog? Not exactly, Dr. Robotnik. What do you mean, not exactly? Either there is or there isn't. Well, I, you see, I, but I, you, emergency light, Dr. Robotnik, monitor 10. <sighs> isn't that one of those fetid little freedom fighters? Affirmative, sir. His name is Tails, and he is usually accompanied by Sonic. Take him. Perhaps his cries will flush out the hedgehog. The give and take between Robotnik and Sonic has done really well throughout the series. While Sonic and company quite often defeat Robotnik, he rarely comes off as an incompetent dictator. And at times, Sonic appears weak with his own emotions and immaturity, especially when it comes to his uncle Chuck, who just so happens to be the creator of the Roboticizer. Hold. And just who are you? What's up, Snidely? It's Snively. Do I know you? Not yet, but you will, pal. Big time! Huh? Nice hair, no Snide! Enjoy ah. while you can. <laughs> season 1 is the darker of the two seasons, as ABC asked for the show to be lighter in content for the second run. While noticeable as a whole, it does not bring the show down, except for a few episodes that simply don't belong. These episodes tend to bring the focus on Antoine, a clumsy, arrogant, and cowardly freedom fighter who despises Sonic despite being incapable of doing anything himself. These episodes have very little to do with the overarching storylines from the series, and clearly were shoehorned in to appease ABC. The other major change is the relationship between Robotnik and his second-in-command, Snively. Loyal to a fault in Season 1, Season 2 we see that Snively actually detests Robotnik and secretly wants to rule Mobius himself. Unfortunately, the show was cancelled just as Snively got his chance to do that. Alright! Way past cool! Robotnik's gone! I don't believe this! Sonic, we actually did it! <laughs> wow, if a high five does that, what happens with a kiss? 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I don't want to find out. Out of here! <laughs> Several theories exist on why the show didn't make it past season two, be it dispute between production companies or poor performance thanks to the competition with the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. There was a lot of untapped potential in this series, and it's sad to see that it went to the wayside. But what we do have is two really solid seasons of a video game mascot that we just simply don't find that often in television. This is Must Watch Nostalgia. Round guy finally let Sonic defeat him. Well, don't celebrate too soon, Hedgehog. Now it's my turn. <laughs> and, uh, um, and I'm not alive.